Hi, it's Melanie here from Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers, and today I'm with Stuart Galbraith. And Stuart, today your question is, what is a fair amount of compensation for medical coverage and loss of income due to a car accident? Hmm, okay, well, uh, fair compensation is certainly uh, subjective, right. uh, but we, we do the best that we can here at Penny and Associates to get um, the most we can get that the insurance company will typically pay. So let's talk about medical bills. Medical bills would be uh, what are reasonable and necessary related to the injury sustained in the motor vehicle accident. Yeah. Sounds pretty straightforward, um, but it can get a little confusing if there are prior pre-existing medical conditions. Um, we get into other issues in that regard, but to keep it real fundamental, um, what bills were incurred medically because of the accident, we, we, we can recover for what was actually paid, either by yourself as the injured party, by your health insurance company, by maybe your auto insurance company, if you have what's called medical payment coverage. There are different sources that pay the medical bills, but we can recover those from the negligent third party insurance that caused the accident. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, back when I was a young man, um, in the early 1990s through uh, 2011, actually, we were able to recover for gross medical bills, meaning if the uh, hospital or your doctor billed X dollars, we'd be able to recover X dollars. Mm -hmm. And that law changed in 2011 due to a California Supreme Court case, Howell versus Hamilton Meats. So now we can only recover for what's actually paid after adjustments um, by the insurance companies, the health insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So it's reduced the amount that we can recover recover, but we recover every dime that we can recover. Um, so that's number one. Number two would be your lost earnings or wage loss. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be for any time you miss from work because of the accident, because of your injuries, because of pain, your inability to get to work. Um, and then any time that you miss to attend medical appointments that are related to the accident, we'd want you to keep track of all of that information. And then we multiply the hours by your effective hourly rate. Hmm. So, yeah, we'll look at your pay stubs. So if you're on salary, we'll do the math and come up with an effective hourly rate. Um, that makes it fairly straightforward with, with uh, lost earnings. As mm -hmm. long as, you know, it's related to uh, your injuries and you're not just taking a week off so you can go to the Caribbean. <laughs> um, so we've got to be careful there. It's what's related to your, to your injuries. Uh, and then one more thing with the wage loss is that people, um, depending on their job and how they're compensated, can use sick time, vacation time, uh, personal time off, PTO, and they can still get their full paycheck week to week, even though they're not working. Um, so can they still recover in a personal injury case? The answer is yes, you can. Mm -hmm. So you can get your sick time and vacation time, but, but then you can also recover that same amount of money um, from the negligent third party insurance company. So that's very important to understand. A lot of people don't know that. And if you're handling a case on your own without representation, I know it's hard to believe, but the insurance company, for the auto insurance company for the other side, they may not tell you that. So, really? Really. They surprising. May not, yeah, very surprising. <laughs> right. uh, so it's important to understand what your rights are in terms of what you can recover after a motor vehicle accident. Absolutely. Uh, one last point would be, it's a lot more challenging to get your wage loss or loss of earnings if you're self-employed. Mm -hmm. So if you're self-employed, you really need to have good record keeping, profit loss statements. If you have to hire someone else to do the job that you normally did for yourself, um, you'd want to keep all that record keeping because you still have the burden to prove um, as the plaintiff um, what you've lost. If you can't prove what you've lost, um, you can't recover. Yeah. So that's the challenge. Absolutely. It's, it's challenging, but not insurmountable. That's for sure. Yeah. I bet a lot of freelancers probably don't keep really good records. I could see how that could be really difficult. Yes. We run into that pretty regularly. You know, people are just living their lives and doing the best that they can. And the people that are self-employed, a lot of times they're, they're go-getters and they're, they're working really hard and they're doing their job and they don't, the paperwork side of it, that um, that's not the priority right. in terms of challenge. Yeah. Again, it's, it's something that we can overcome, though. Right. Yeah, we're moving into this gig economy, so you're going to be more and more people that are doing that. So, okay. Yeah, well, really good information. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Take care, Stuart. Bye-bye.